I'm Dean Rock, Dublin footballer and ambassador for Sky Sports Super Games. So certainly uh, well aware of it from, from a very young age, just even going to Crow Park and going to watch Dublin um, from the age of six onwards, you'd, you'd always meet guys along the Joneses Road, you know, talking to dad and, you know, people wanted a photo or wanted to communicate with him, you know, all the time. So you were well aware of the fact that, you know, who he was and what he represented and, and how good of a player he was. And then obviously, as I got older then, he would have done a lot of commentary in Crow Park. So just even going up to, to see him there doing a bit with Michal or Hurtick or guys like that, it was, you know, as well, I, I knew I was in a privileged position to be able to watch games from that from, from, from that angle and to, to meet certain, you know, I suppose, personalities or celebrity sports sports people up there so um yeah and dad was one of them i suppose so it, it was pretty cool but um yeah he was he had, he had a good career all right i probably only kicked freeze because of my dad so um growing up he was, he was still playing club football up until he was you know 41 or 42 so it gave me an opportunity to go and watch him quite a lot which which was good and you know had he not been a free taker I probably wouldn't have been a free taker because everything he wanted to do or was doing I wanted to do so he was certainly my sporting role model growing up and then as I got older obviously when he stopped playing I to, had to fall onto, fall onto others but uh, he's certainly the reason why I wanted to be successful um, and, and play for Dublin it was it was his kind of passing it down to me which which ultimately wanted me to play for Dublin. Yeah, well, I'd always would have been in the back garden, yeah, I was, <clears throat> I was always the man taking the freeze when I was a kid, you know what I mean, for Dublin, so it was certainly, it had certainly started from, from a very young age, the, the goal to always be a free taker for Dublin and play in Crow Park and win big games, so um, it was certainly something that I wanted to be my identity um, from a very young age, which was pretty cool that you're living it now and you, you've realised that, that goal that you had as a, as a young lad. Yeah, you, you, then that's when you reflect on years gone by as a kid and, and stuff like that. Obviously, you're not thinking about that in, in the moment. It's something that comes, you know, in the in the winter months afterwards when you've got downtime with your family and you're celebrating and you're reflecting on what you've achieved. So it was, uh, yeah, not not everyone gets to, to, to live that out, you know, so I'm certainly one of the lucky and privileged ones to, to experience that, which is really cool. It's, it's not always plain sailing either, like obviously everyone goes through different struggles throughout their career and um, it certainly wasn't wasn't easy for me, you know, I was dropped probably twice or three times throughout my career with the Dublin senior team, so um, that comes with a lot of, you know, different emotions and and different things going on in your personal life, which is, is hard for your parents obviously to see, but, you know, thankfully, you know, they are always there, there for me during those tough times and, you know, you stick it out, you work hard and work harder and eventually you, you get your rewards, you know. I, yeah, look, they, they would always have a huge amount of belief, belief in me that I would would make it, you know, so it's that's why it's it's nice now for for them to have experienced um, a lot of all-earned victories down through the years, not just for me, it's it's obviously for them. Anytime you're going out to play football, you're you're not representing just yourself, you're obviously the group with Dublin, but then obviously your fan, fa families and friends and, and, and people of Dublin, so it's, uh, it's not, it's just a lot, it's a lot more, it means a lot more than just for you and for, for the team, you know, and I think that's important to remember. Yeah, so I um, graduated from Sports Science and Health in, in DCU, so part of the third year in, the, in college was to go to um, a six month intra placement. So I went to Stewart's Care and worked with Special Olympics athletes and service users in the gym and prescribed uh, physical activity programs for them. Um, so I did that for six months, just loved it. Um, it was for no real reason why I, I did it. I just, it just the opportunity came about and I got stuck into it and just absolutely loved it. And then from there, then um, oh, I graduated and was asked to come back to Stuart's once I'd finished my degree and, and join uh, as an ap adapted physical activity coordinator. So what that involved in was coaching Special Olympics athletes, was prescribing gym programs for, for people with limiting uh, physical ability. Um, and then from there then it just kind of grew and grew and uh, went into fundraising then over the last, num last two years. So I suppose for, it's just trying to do more for the organisation each time that I'm in different roles in Stuart's and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic organisation and something that uh, certainly means a lot to me. It is a really, it's a cool thing to have, you know, they see me every day and 
and you know they're looking at the TV every weekend at the games and stuff. And every Monday we come in and you know they dissect my performance and tell me that I was good or bad or indifferent or whatever it is. And you know it's 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 a it's a good way of you know bringing you back down to back down to earth and a real sense of real reality, I suppose, of oh, what's out there because. We're the lucky ones who, you know, we have lots going for us from a health perspective and things, but, you know, I see it every day. There's certain ser service users and who's insurers who can't do the things that we can do, so, and that certainly helps keep me grounded and, and humble and, and, and go about my business um, and just kind of play Gaelic football as a hobby, really, because that's all it is, you know, it's not, although it's, takes up a huge amount of your time and it's very professional in, a, in an amateur game but at the same time you have to always remember that it is only a hobby and there's far more important things in life than, than Gaelic football. Yeah and that's it, like, uh, I've worked in Shirts Care a number of years and as I've said it many times before it doesn't feel like work to me, like it's just, you know, like work is sometimes is meant to be a bit of a slog or for some people like obviously for others it's, it, work is great but for me it's just an incredible place to work. It's you know, you're greeted with love and affection every day that you walk in, you're talking about, you know, it's just normal things with, 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 with a person with an intellectual disability, which for me, I just feel is, is totally normal. Um, and yeah, it's like, I just love kind of trying to promote the organisation as best I can and, and sell stewards as best I can to potentially people who want to, you know, help us in terms of our fundraising goals and objectives. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible, incredible place to work and I've been very fortunate over the last five years to be there. Bring kind of, you bring those skills from the day job to the, to the to your group setting in Dublin and I think we're very lucky that we have got a very humble group. I think lads understand the, the privileged position that they're in in terms of representing Dublin. You know, lots of great men have worn the jersey in the past and all we are the bearers of the jersey at, at the moment and all the lads on the panel are trying to do is leave it in a better place for <clears throat> younger guys coming in and you have to always remember that as a double footballer it comes with a huge responsibility as well. There's younger guys looking in at you and wondering, okay, well how does how do you how do you do this, how do you do that? So every action that you that you that you do um, in your day-to-day -day life, even away from the pitch, has a massive consequence um, on, on some people. So I think that humility side of things is, is usually important. I think it's certainly a reason why we've been successful uh, down through the years because sometimes that humility piece potentially in certain teams in the past or in certain groups, different sports teams can go with success. So um, it's something that we've managed to keep intact, which has been usually important for us. Like the number one trait I think that you have to have is 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 that resilience piece. Um, you're gonna you're gonna come unstuck at certain stages throughout your career. It's not always gonna be plain sailing. There might be a guy who plays two or three years minor for their county, but then never goes on to play senior county football. Do you know what I mean? So there's loads of examples of you just have to stick at it and, and as best you can and understand that there is gonna be some rocky moments. But I think if you've got the work ethic and you know where you want to get to. I think I think you'll eventually will get there, um, but it just comes down to serious, serious hard work, and and that's as simple as it. Really, you, you can't you can't just fake it or or, or think that you're going to make it. You just got to put in the, the those those hard hours, and ultimately that's what I did. In terms of certain certain bits of my setbacks, it was just not feeling sorry for myself. It was, you know, trying to remain positive um, as best you can and, and sticking at it, and ultimately. Um, believing in and trusting that your hard work that you do on and off the pitch is going to eventually get you to where that, that, that goal is for you personally. And, and you obviously see that in the Special Olympics at least as well that you work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. They like. I mean, they never, they never give out or complain. I mean, the lads just go about their business and they work on their programs and and <laughs> more often than not, they get the success that, that they're looking for. You know what I mean? And it's, I suppose, it's that competitive, competitive edge that I would have that the Special Olympics athletes and stewards have as well. Like, you know, they want to win. Everyone wants to win. But there's going to be times in in that cycle or in that journey where. You're ultimately you're just not going to win, and I think that's the resilience piece I spoke about in terms of it's you know meeting that head on and and reflecting on where you can get better and where you can improve and just be very open-minded and positive and I think if you if you can do that you you won't go too far wrong.